Hey guys, welcome back to the Passive Money Plan. I'm Alex, that's Kirby. Uh, today we're going to be talking about real estate investors and how they are asset rich and cash poor. So I think this is a great topic because a lot of people think that to be a millionaire, you need a million dollars in the bank. That's what I always hear. Um, but in reality, uh, being a millionaire is just your net worth, you know, how many, how much money you have in assets and then you know, subtracting the liabilities you have against those assets. So if you have a million dollars in real estate, zero cash, zero debt, you're a millionaire, but you're cash poor. So right. So it's a true statement. People don't want to believe it. Like when people walk around and say, oh, I'm a millionaire or he's a millionaire, they think and they just have millions of dollars to blow. And I'm just going to go through my journey Every dollar that I have excess, I mean, in excess of what I need, I'm looking for the next deal. I don't use, I don't, I mean, again, once I have everything I need, it's just, you know, going to the next deal, next deal, next deal to keep growing the portfolio. I'm not sitting here with just cash, just piling up, stacking up. The only time it's stacking up is to do another deal. Um, especially when I first started out, it was you know, money go, money go, money go. Uh, I'm a little different. I'm a little different from other real estate investors because most real estate investors, they're 100% devoted to real estate. Me, uh, I started off in the stock market. So I've always had money allocated to the stock market. So if they want to call that cash, then then yeah, you know, I have a lot of cash, but it's always invested somewhere. I don't just sit around with millions of dollars just sitting in the bank just to depreciate just so I can go, you know, throw it up at the club or something like that. I just don't. I'm always looking to find my ways for my money to make more money. I mean, money just sitting in a bank account for me is it's crazy. I mean, it's insane to me. I can't I can't just sit there and look at money and just be like, oh yeah, I know I'll just have this money, but what am I gonna do with it? I live a very boring life. I mean, compared to, you know, other people that you see on social media that's, you know, clubbing, Louis Vuitton stores and all that. I mean, I really don't care about those things. When I was younger, I bought a lot of that crap, but now it's no big thing. I'm not out here to impress nobody. And so most of my money, no matter if it's stocks, no matter if it's buying another business, no matter if it's buying real estate, do all of those businesses generate cash flow? And the stock market and businesses, real estate generate cash flow. Yeah. The cash flow itself generates me enough money where I could go to the club and go buy Lamborghinis and stuff like that. But when the cash flow comes in, I'm just looking for other places to deploy it because there's nothing I need. So the statement is 100% true, especially people that's mainly uh, focused on real estate. They're, you know, money's going in, money's going in. They're having cash flow come back. Yeah, then the cash flow covers, you know, their necessities and even wants that they need. But they're not sitting there with piles of cash because, I mean, Alex, you know, you started in the real estate game. Stuff happens, you know, you need capital to deploy to fix stuff. You need capital to deploy to do the next deal. I mean, we look at the MLS every day and we're looking to see what deals are out there. If a deal comes across like one I caught you the other day in an area that I didn't even think about investing in or I refused to invest in. But it was a deal that was like, man, it sounds good. So I had to do more due, dil due diligence, but then it came out to be a dud, but I was ready to put the capital to work if the deal panned out. So most of the, most people that's in real estate, especially in the early days, not in the later, you know, once you got past, you know, five, seven years, then they have more, you know, cash stacked up, but they still looking to deploy it. But they're not just sitting there just looking to just blow it, blow it, blow it and live the you know social media life that everybody's trying to portray what a millionaire is. That's not what they're doing, especially if their only game is real estate. They sitting there, you know, very focused on that cash that comes in because they're either IE deploying it or waiting for some catastrophic to happen or waiting for, you know, a lot of people are waiting for the housing market to crash so they can take advantage of there. So they're not just going out there blowing money. Because they can. If you see a real somebody that say they invested in real estate and they blown a lot of cash, they're not going to business no more because all the cash is going to the street. Yeah, those are good points. Cause like, you know, you see, and we talk about this a lot, is you know, the celebrities 
the um, athletes that make a lot of uh, money, not all of them, but the majority of them who uh, they blow their money. And there, it, it's an interesting trend because if you look at it, it's like people that have regular jobs, they use that active income to invest and then they have a business or they have real estate. They're not they're always cash poor, you know, they're always doing that, looking for the next deal or looking to reinvest into their business or into the next asset. And you see that trend with like people that have a lower active income and then they're growing their passive income. But then people that have a high active income, they just treat it like a job, like, oh, I can just go to work the next day or I'll get the next uh, the next contract and I'll have more money. And so they're just constantly blowing it. And, you know, I think people believe that you have to have a million dollars in the bank to be a millionaire because that's what we see on TV. You know, we see these millionaires that have a lot of cash and they don't have any assets. And there's all this confusion and stuff on what is an asset. I've seen people try to say that their jewelry collection is a, you know, gold investment. And, you know, we've talked, we've done a video on that, but it's a... Yeah, just it, this is a good topic just to like open people's eyes. Like it's it doesn't mean you have a million dollars cash. And when you're thinking like an investor, you don't want the cash. Like every time I get cash, I'm just like, OK, what else can I invest in? Like I don't you know, and when I have too little cash, I'm like, oh, this is boring because I want to have enough to buy the next deal. You know, there's like you said, there's no need for cash other than you know, maybe an emergency or reserves for the next project or something like that. They, above that, you know, there's nothing I want to spend the money on uh, for my own personal, you know, entertainment. It's just getting the next deal. Right. And uh, Grant Cardone said it best. He say, always go broke. And in real estate investors, that's what that's what uh, they're trying to do or we're trying to do. Like I said, I'm a little different because, you know, I have the, you know, they count, you know, stocks and investments, you know, short term investments is investments that you can get the cash back three days or less. That's considered cash. Um, so I have assets there, but just cash at all. Like Grant Cardone says, go broke, go broke. Like you get the cash and then you find a way to, you know, deploy it into another deal. And what it does is when you see your accounts close to zero, it gets you motivated to find other avenues to bring in more income. If you sit in there, and I remember uh, 2012, I want to say, and this is before I got into the real estate game at all, I used to have cash just sitting there. I mean, I would have hundreds of thousands of dollars just sitting in, you know, checking accounts, savings accounts, wasn't doing nothing with it, but it was just sitting there. And then I slowly started to deploy it, and then I got into real estate, then I started deploying it. You know, one after another one. I believe my first year in real estate, I did four deals, four deals, and it was just deploying cash, deploying cash, deploying cash. And then now, every time I get cash, it's deploying it. I mean, of course, in the stock market, because yeah, I still invest in the stock market. I'm probably one of the rare few people that you'll hear that invested in real estate and in the stock market. I believe me, me, Kevin is also, you know, he's in took it to another scale, but I, I believe in using one avenue, one hand to feed the other. But most real estate investors, they are 100% real estate. They don't know nothing else but real estate, in which that's fine. Only thing you need is find one niche that you are 100% obsessed, obsessed with and you just drive into it and dive into it and you're 100% focused on that and you can grow and get to whatever status you want to be. Yeah, um, not to make this video too long, but the great thing with real estate too is that it's a necessity. Like People are always going to need a place to live. So right. even, in, you know, the hardest times, people still need a place to live and a place to rent from. And so that you don't have to worry about your, you don't have to worry about your investment uh, as much as maybe worrying about having one single stock. Because, I mean, if you're just worried about the performance of that stock, I mean, we've seen, you know, even the biggest companies can come down in a recession um, or, you know, times like that. But in real estate, your you know your money is always coming in because it's a necessity. Right. Yeah, and if anybody's wondering uh, which portfolio I have bigger stocks or real estate, it is more in real estate than in stocks. But just to, for anybody that was wondering, it is more in real estate than stocks. 
And like Alex said, I mean, I believe investing in necessity base. Necessity can get you through a recession. I mean, if recession happens and I'm in the stock market, I'm looking to get a 20, 30 percent haircut on the positions that I have. So uh, stocks, I don't I mean, with real estate, excuse me, with real estate, I don't look at the net value of it. I only care about the cash flow that comes from it. So could the values of properties go down if we get a deep recession? Yeah, but that that don't matter. That's not a factor because as long as the cash flow stays the same or improves, because if you don't know, uh, during the financial crisis, rent prices actually increased instead of decreased during the financial crisis because the demand for rentals was higher. So in, if, you know, you got people on, on the internet and stuff saying that, oh, the housing market is going to crash, people are going to walk away from their house, that just raises the demand for rental property. If people are walking away from their houses and getting foreclosed and short sale on and things like that, their credit score is going to go bad. And the only option they're going to have is to rent. So it will drive their demand for rent higher, which will drive the prices for rent higher. So real estate in the residential space is a hedge for, uh, you know, recessions and economic downturns and things like that. But the stock market is, you know, a risk factor there. But I still like playing both sides of it because the stock market is a leading indicator of where it's going to go. The stock market is always in the future. So when the economy recovers, the stock market is going to recover faster than the housing market. So when the stock market is increasing, I can use capital from the stock market to take advantage of the depressed prices in the real estate market. So that's why I still play both of them. But my portfolio is bigger on the real estate side than the housing side. Yeah, and it's funny because like even with rental real estate, like you can still sell the real estate based off of what you're bringing in in income. So there could be a recession on say single family homes and single family homes drop, but like if your income is still the same, an investor will still pay you based off of the rents, not not because of you know crashing house prices. Yeah. But with all that being said, guys, if you like the video, hit the like button, uh, leave a comment down below, share, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next video.